There was once a lawyer whose name was Francis Scott Key. He penned a song which I'm confident that everyone here is familiar with. It's called The Star-Spangled Banner. On March 3, 1931, by an official act of Congress, the Star-Spangled Banner became the national anthem of the United States of America. We go to a ball game or we stand in our church services and we sing this song and the words float over our lips without us really thinking about the words we're singing. Most of us memorized it as a child but never really think much about what it means. Let me tell you a story. Francis Scott Key was a lawyer in Baltimore while the colonies were engaged in bitter conflict with the mother country, Great Britain. Because of this conflict and the duration of it, many prisoners had been taken by both sides. The American colonies had prisoners and the British had prisoners. The American government initiated an exchange. They went to the British and said, let's negotiate a prisoner exchange. The Americans said, we want to send a man out to discuss this. You see, they were holding the American prisoners on ships about a thousand yards offshore. They said, we want to send a man named Francis Scott Key out to negotiate with your officers to see if we can arrange a mutual exchange. At the appointed time, Francis Scott Key went out in a rowboat to negotiate with the British officials. They reached an agreement that men could be exchanged on a one-for-one -one basis. Francis Scott Key, jubilant with the fact that he'd been successful, went down below in the ship and what he found was a cargo hold filled to overflowing with humanity. He announced to these American prisoners, Men, I have news for you. Tonight you will be free. He said, Tonight I have successfully negotiated your release and your return to the colonies. He said, This very night you'll be taken off this ship, out of this filth, and out of your chains. As he went back up on deck to arrange for their passage to the shore, the British Admiral came up to him and said, We have a problem. He said, We will still honor our commitment to release these men, but it will be merely academic. After tonight, it just won't matter. Francis Scott Key said, What do you mean? The Admiral said, Mr. Key, I have just learned that tonight we have laid an ultimatum upon the colonies. He continued, your people will either capitulate and lay down the colors of that flag you think so much of, or you see that fort right over there, Fort Henry. We've been ordered to remove it from the face of the earth. Francis Scott Key replied, how can you possibly do that? The Admiral turned his attention to the sea and said, if you will, scan the horizon of the sea. And as he looked, he could see hundreds of tiny dots, and the Admiral said, what you're witnessing is the entirety of the British war fleet. He said, all of the gunpowder, all of the armament of the British naval fleet is being trained at this very moment on the destruction of that fort. They will be within striking distance of Fort Henry in a matter of minutes. He said, the war will soon be over these men would be free anyway. Francis Scott Key said, but you can't shell that fort. That's a large fort that's full of women and children. It's not even predominantly a military fort. The Admiral said, don't worry, we've left them a sure way out. He said, do you see that flag way up on the rampart? We've told them that if they will lower that flag, the shelling will stop immediately. We'll know that they've surrendered, and you'll all be under British rule again. Francis Scott Key went down below and shared with the men what was about to happen. They said, how many ships do they have? He said, hundreds. As the ships got closer, Francis Scott Key went back up on deck. He told the American prisoners down in the hold of the ship, men, I'll shout back down to you what's happening as we watch. As twilight began to fall, and as a haze hung over the ocean, as it does at sunset, suddenly the British war fleet unleashed their nightmarish torrent of fire. The sound was deafening. There were so many guns that there were never any breaks in the thunderous attack. Francis Scott Key would later relate that it was absolutely impossible 
to talk or even hear. He said that suddenly the sky, although it was dark, was suddenly lit. He said that from down below, all he could hear the prisoners say was, tell us where the flag is. What have they done with the flag? Is the flag still flying over the rampart? Tell us. One hour, two hours, three hours into the shelling. Every time a bomb would explode that was close to the flag, they could see the flag in the illuminated red glare of that fiery bomb, and Francis Scott Key would report down to the men in the hold. It's still there. It's not down. The Admiral came up to Francis Scott Key, and he said, Your people are insane. What's the matter with them? He said, Don't they understand that this is an impossible situation? Francis Scott Key said that he remembered what George Washington had said. He said, The thing that sets the American Christian apart from all other people in the world is that he will die on his feet before he'll live on his knees. The British Admiral said, We have now instructed all of the guns to concentrate only on the rampart and to take that flag down. He said, We don't understand something. Our reconnaissance tells us that the flag has been hit directly again and again and again, and yet it's still flying. We don't understand that. Then he said, Now we're about to bring every gun in the British naval fleet for the next three hours to bear on that point. Francis Scott Key said that the barrage was unmerciful. All that he could hear from the men down below was praying. Their prayer? God, please keep that flag flying where we last saw it. As sunrise came, he said there was a heavy mist hanging over the land, but the rampart was just tall enough and there stood the flag, completely unrecognizable and in shreds. The flagpole itself was at a curious angle, but the flag was still at the top. Francis Scott Key went ashore and immediately went into Fort Henry to see what had happened. What he found was that the flagpole and that flag had suffered repetitious direct hits. When it had fallen, fathers, brothers, sons, who knew what it meant for that flag to be on the ground, even though they knew that all of the British guns were trained on it, walked over and physically held it up until they too died. Then their bodies were removed and others took their place. Francis Scott Key said that what held that flagpole in place at such an unusual angle was the bodies of American patriots. As he stood there in the aftermath of this onslaught, he wrote down the words on the back of an envelope that he had in his pocket. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Oh, yes, freedom isn't free, and these patriots paid the price for freedom.